it's, it's a world where there are two caves. In one cave, it's people living is conscious, people living clean, people who is worried and concerned about others, about nature, the environment they live in. The other cave, it's people dirty, they don't care about others. When they have to go to toilet, they even don't go out of the cave. So when everything is a mess, they decide to move to another cave. Now, the moment, the current moment we are living, there are no more caves to move. So we have to change our mind and care the cave, the place, the environment where we live. So we must change the mind, the mentality. There is no more me and you. Now it's time for us. <laughs> Nancho Dean is my guest on this episode of Inside Ideas, brought to you by 1.5 Media and Innovators Magazine. Nancho is a naturalist, professional explorer, and popularizer, the first person in history to walk around the world and swim across the five continents. There have been more people on the moon, but beyond the, this feat, what is truly important is the purpose for which he undertakes these expeditions. It is the conservation of our planet. That is the purpose and his mission. From 2013 to 2016, he went around the world on foot, an adventure that led him to travel four continents, 31 countries, and 33,000 kilometers on foot alone without assistance and without interruption to document our big problem, climate change, the climate crisis. Between 2018 and 2019, he completed the Nemo expedition, a challenge that has led him to unite the five continents by swimming to, to launch a message of ocean conservation. Nancho was born on August 20th, 1980 in Malaga. He owes his passion for nature and adventure to his parents, who from an early age took him to the mountains, camping and swimming in the sea. As a professional naturalist, professional adventurer, speaker and writer of a couple books, his mission is to make expeditions that document the state of our planet disclose and raise awareness of the importance of caring for this, our only home. Nancho, welcome to the show. It's so great to have you here. Hi, Mark. Thank you very much. It's a honor and a true privilege talking to you in your podcast. You're absolutely welcome. It's my honor and privilege to have you here because I think what you've done is an absolute amazing feat You've had some adventures and experience that, uh, as, as it says in your biography, very few people have ever had to see the home that we're actually standing on all the time, to see every aspect and to see how it's functioning. You've written a couple books. Uh, I know that they're only in Spanish. Can you tell me the names of them and kind of how the progress is going on those books to get them into English and, and a little bit of well, what's in them and what they're about? We have a big Spanish audience, but we also have a much larger English audience. And I'd like to, to let them know that maybe something to hope for in the future. Yeah, I wrote a first book called Wild and Free. I published it in 2017, and it's about the expedition that took me to walk around the world to document climate change. It's actually having a very good welcoming. It's in the sixth edition, and by the moment, it's only the Spanish version, but we are working on the English version. So hopefully, I think maybe around 2021, uh, it will be in the English market. And I just published my second book, um, two months ago in June 2020. It's, it, the, the name of this book is The Call of the Ocean. And it's about my, another expedition I did that led me to connect the five continents swimming to raise awareness for the oceans. So the, the real protagonist of this book are the oceans. It's not me, are the oceans and what I've seen, what I've documented in all the 
uh, marine environments, I swim and I to cross the to cross and connect the, the oceans. So by the moment, two books and we are working on the English version. Fabulous. Now, do you, did you self-publish those books or are they sponsored? Do you have some kind of a, a partner that's helping you, supporting you to get those books published? Yeah, I publish them with the publishing house Planeta. is the largest publishing house in the uh, Spanish market. And they publish here in Spain and also in America. So I'm, I'm happy to work with the, with the best team. Uh, we've got the same goal is that these books reach as much audience as possible. Fabulous. Um, you have a lot of videos online as well, and some in Spanish, some in English, majority mm -hmm. in Spanish, and there's a lot of ways people can go and look and follow you. I, I, I have a, a few other questions. Uh, your biography actually is much longer because you've, you've been around, you've done a lot of things, and you've done some expeditions, and it's taken you... Uh, different years of, of a journey across the world and not only walking and swimming. My question is, there's a program with National Geographic called the Explorer uh, Program. Are, have they approached you at all? Are you a member of that? Uh, um, one, and, and two, there's another program with Conservation International that they're looking for fellows and and people just like you who are going around the world and documenting these things. Have you been approached by any of these big, huge organization, organizations? Because what you do is amazing. They should be gobbling you up to try to get this message out there to humanity. Yeah, yeah, I, I haven't uh, reached uh, those both organizations, um, but it's, it's one of my goals, in the, not in the short term, but in the medium term, uh, as you said before, I've been working on the Spanish market, but my goal is to jump into the English market because my expeditions are global, are, are international. So I think my message uh, has to be thrown to all the humanity. So I'm trying to, to work with different partners. One, of course, is National Geographic and also the, the, for the conservation of the nature. Um, I will be very happy to, to work with them. And now I think it's, it's time we must collaborate with uh, partners and people. So, and here in, in, in Spain, things move different than in the English market. Of course, walk around the world and connect the five continents are unprecedented achievements. And it, that's not the important for me. The most important thing is the, the mission I, I want to reach with this project. So I will be very happy to work with them. Great. Well, I think organizations like that are, are a great support, uh, not only monies, but reach and awareness to promote your message. I, I, I asked you on the show because I believe what you've done, and I know it's not about you. It's about your mission and about the planet and the oceans. Um, but that's not a feat that everybody would take upon themselves, uh, a, a selfless act. And so I want to make sure that uh, you're supported and those organizations actually find you and help support to get the word out because it's important because there's things that you've seen, that you've experienced, that you've documented that are important things that we all need to know that we, we might not be able to go out and do some of the things, even tickle the surface of what you've done, but we can live vicariously through your, you and your experiences to, to bring us to another place. And that's really what I want to hope to do today on, on the show is um, I want you to give your insights and your takeaways to my guests and my listeners so that they can feel empowered or more knowledgeable about what you learned and what they could do and apply into their lives to make our planet better, to conserve our oceans and help fix some of the problems that we're experiencing. You and I met uh, last year at uh, COP25 in, in Madrid and um, it was, uh, it was a nice meeting. It was very short. We didn't get a talk very long. I was busy running around to other things and you were busy as well. Um, but it was an honor for me to, 
to, to meet you, but I, I, I'm telling my listeners this because I want them to know how we connected and how our paths crossed and how we've remained in touch with each other since that time. Um, how were your feelings at the end of the COP after you finished your days of visiting and your time there? How did you feel that entire event went? And from that point to today, how have you weathered the pandemic? How has your progress been and gone up until this point? You, you, you mentioned earlier, you launched your book during the middle of the pandemic. So, you know, June, um, that's also got to be a little bit frustrating to launch it in the middle of a lockdown and things. And so I would like to find out how you felt about the COP and what was achieved and and what you got out of it, and then your experience up until now through the pandemic, how all your life's experiences have maybe prepared you, helped you to get through this time. You have another surprise there that maybe you'll let us all know on that happened during that time as well. So I won't talk too much, but, but I wanted to set you up to, to tell us that story. Yeah, for me, it was great to meet you in the Cup 25 here in Madrid. It's true, it was a short meeting, but I, I feel deeply touched by talking to you. I, th I feel just in a few minutes we have many things in common. And I was looking forward to, to see or to meet you in another uh, time. So I think now is that, is that moment. It's through a screen, but I think it's a first step. Then maybe it will come maybe new and more steps. Um, yeah, it's true now. <clears throat> um, I think every movement we do, to raise awareness for the for the planet and for nature is great, is good, but we, we don't have time enough <clears throat> to waste. So I think we must be ambitious. Ambitious from all point of view, uh, citizens from the society, uh, all the companies as top decision makers, and of course the governments. So it's okay, every step is good in the right direction, but I think we, we, we don't have to waste time and we must act uh, fastly. We don't have time to waste. Um, during this time, of course, I published my second book in June. It was uh, planned to be published in March. So we have to wait uh, three months later. Um, to publish a book is like the, the end, is like to, to, to cycle the expedition. I've been for one year training and planning, two years to accomplish the expedition, and one year and one more year to write the book. So it's four years in an expedition, um, when you publish the book, uh, you expect the, the, the top, the most. So when, when you publish your book, it's the pandemic time, so it's not the best time to sell it, but your, do, your job is well done, you've done everything is in your hands, so we go uh, uh, like, um, we could say like a stone by stone building the, 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 the building, the, uh, the bridge. Um, I, there is another surprise, I've been father recently, Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you very much. I was fathered on, on April, if 30, the 30th of, of, of April. Um, I was living, actually, I was living in Madrid. That's my, my we can say, my campsite is in Madrid where I move and I fly and I travel. But we have a, a, another house in the north of Spain. So a few days before the lockdown were, were um, imposed. So we decided to go to this little house in the north of Spain by the sea. And we, we've been here for the last four months see, since March. So my baby is a, is a girl. She's three months, actually. Her name is Mar. It means sea in like the ocean. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, everything is connected. Um, yeah, we're here happy, very happy. So I, I, I've been father. I published my second book. I've been working also on, on a project. It's called We All Together Overcome It. Uh, with different professionals, we collect letters, motivational letters from people of the adventure, actors, singers. So, and we are not doctors, but I think we can work for to, to improve the spirit and the mentality of people uh, sick with coronavirus. So we collect all these letters and we send to all the hospitals, and it was a very beautiful energy, a very beautiful movement that spread all Spain. 
and I feel very happy to do not not be with your arms crossed, but take take action and work for a better for a better uh, society. Um, well, I had a lot of journeys and travels and conferences, congresses. Almost all of them were cancelled or postponed. So you have to readapt, to reinvent. And now here we are working from home through all the platforms. Um, I think we are living amazing times. All, every crisis is an opportunity. And one of the things we learned from this uh, pandemic is how relate is the health of the planet with the health of humanity. So it's an amazing time to change the, the, the compass to rethink about our objectives and what's the path we are following as humanity. So that's my mission in life. And I think now it's time to make uh, partnerships and to work all together. So I'm, I'm working hard, 100%. That's fabulous. That's great. And, and you must have a very supportive partner and um, with a new baby to help you on this mission. Uh, as um, she also an adventurist and uh, traveler like you, or do you plan future adventures or missions with her? Because uh, as you uh, mentioned, um, your expeditions are by yourself and kind of lonely, and it's this contact with the world. Or, or is that something you're going to subject, subject your family on? in the future or how, how will that work in, in the future? That's just kind of my personal views. I'd like to know how, how you balance that family uh, and expedition life. Yeah, of course. I think life is an adventure. Uh, having children is one of the greatest adventure we, we may have in life. Uh, not only for three or four years, it's a full life uh, adventure. Um, sometimes I think we have children and we try to, to, to um, I mean, it's, we, we want to, to reach our goals through our, our children, but when I've been father, <clears throat> my, my daughter has uh, made me feel more sure and, 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 and strong in my believing, believings and thoughts. I, if I, if I was fully commit with the earth conservation. Now I have a daughter, even more. I want to leave her a much better place to live. So it's not, I, it, having a daughter did, uh, didn't change my mind, but just the opposite is too much fully commit with my mission, my purpose, my goals in life. And of course, I'm, I, I feel I'm a privilege because I have discovered my, my purpose, my way. I feel my feelings, my thoughts, and my ideas are on the same path. So um, I will take my wife, I will take my children on adventure. I'm planning a new one, <clears throat> sailing on a boat, and I want to, to travel with, a, to, to make a documentary. And I want also to travel with a scientifics. So we make uh, also an inform like a, a dossier and about all the scientific research we do. And I'm planning it for the next year. So of course, adventure goes on and I, I, I will not um, say goodbye to my old style of life, but I will keep on with much more strength. Pat, perfect, that sounds like you've got the great new team that's going to support you and make it that much fun funner adventure and because you're doing it together you're much more powerful you're united in your own your own team um the 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 whole reason i kind of ask you these questions is leading up all those experiences those expeditions that you had um in order to do those to achieve those you have to have a lot of resilience so we, we both talk about sustainability and cleaning up our planet and, and document the things that we see, um, but it absolutely does not matter how much sustainability you have if the very next day a hurricane, a typhoon, a, 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 a climate catastrophe occurs and wipes out all your sustainability. You need to have some resilience that has sustainability ingrained in it 
in order to weather not only pandemics, but to weather um, all sorts of natural catastrophes. And I believe you have that resilience. Do you think, uh, I, I know you told me you guys moved uh, uh, during the pandemic to your house and uh, it's by the sea and I'm sure it's a beautiful place to live and a beautiful place to be and be close to nature. But has any of that uh, um, resilience that you had or those experience prepared you for this moment that this pandemic has put you in a spot where you can help others like the letter writing that that you talked about or to make your transition uh, to a better world or through this time a lot easier can you tell us about that and maybe give us some wisdoms of what others could take away or learn from um, who might be struggling during this time yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, after walking around the world, you became a really resilient person. I've been for three years walking through deserts, through mountains and jungles and every kind of different environments from 50 degrees by the day plus uh, and uh, minus 25 degrees at night uh, in uh, places with a lot of humidity different cultures, one of the most difficult things is to be able to adapt to so many different environments and constantly changing environments. All kinds of countries, all kinds of religions, all kinds of languages, all kinds of color of skin, everything. So you must be able to adapt. Um, sometimes the, the food is not good enough or it's not as healthy as your home country. Uh, sometimes the water or there are illness. I, I get the chikungunya fever in Chiapas in Mexico because a mosquito bite me. There is no vaccine and there is no nothing to do. Just to your body ha has to react. And it was for during six days. I, I was with 41 fever degrees. Oh um, it was it was like uh, through hard times. And I was uh, people with machetes with knives try to assault me several times in some countries of Central America, like Honduras, El Salvador. I, I was in a terrorist attack in Bangladesh. So I live, it's not only being out of the comfort zone, but it's, it's putting your life at risk. So those moments are a real, a real check to your believings and your thoughts, because you are much more comfortable at home, uh, watching a movie and eating popcorns with your family but if you go through those moments and you still go on, that's because you you are deeply committed and you you fully believe in what you what you do. So I've been for three years living what we, I can keep in my pram, in my trolley, just a few things. So that's one of the learnings you have is you you become you became free, a free person. Not only your body, not only your be belongings, but your thoughts and your mind is free. So you are able to survive in every kind of environment and with just a few things. And I think also to appreciate what we have. That's also very important learning. We always see the, the, the glass, it's only the empty glass, but it's, full, yeah. but it's half full, of course. And I think that's another learning of this pandemic. We have to appreciate what we have. I mean, our health. I mean the nature, I mean the company of the friends, of the family. And of course, give nothing for granted. At any moment, life may, can make a 180 degrees change. So give nothing for granted, um, appreciate what you have, L learn to live with a few things and always with a positive mind, always to improve what you have, not with a negative mind. Um, of course, you became resilient because I have that adaptability, adaptability to move from one place to another one and always trying to make a positive impact in the, in the society. Always I think I have something to, 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 to share or to teach or to, yeah, is from my expeditions and all the learnings and experiences. So I think just only being conscious of the miracle of being alive, that's reason enough to to be positive and to try to make a positive impact in, in society and to feel lucky so of course i uh, uh, resilience is is one of the 
things that the times we are going through more is more demanded. Um, yeah. Being resilient, yeah. Um, there are so many things that you just mentioned and unpacked that I actually we could go down some rabbit holes because I'm sure there are some exciting stories and adventures and maybe not so exciting, some very scary and, and dangerous ones. Do you think whether it was the people who would try to attack you with the machetes or whether it was uh, uh, the terrorist attack in Bangladesh or, or um, that, that that was the hardest um, to get through those type of fearful and horrific situations or was the hardest thing to control your mind and to get through your own um, worst enemies as yourself to realize that you can do it, that you're not going to give up, that you have that resilience inside of you, that you're, this is your mission, this is how you're, you're going to get through, that, that maybe that mindset or that uh, belief in yourself, that that was probably worse than people with machetes or, or climate change or people in a terrorist situation? Yeah, for sure. The most difficult thing is the, is your, your mental fears. And that's the most difficult thing. And it, it, I always say the most difficult thing for me was to make the first step. And it's to face your fears and to, to, to fight for your dreams. Because I'm in a very comfortable way of life. I mean, I, was, I have my job, I have my family, your friends, your home. But you have to give up everything. And you, you start a journey, you don't know if you will come back. And that's something you must uh, realize, you, you must face life and say, okay, we, we are in a, in a journey through life. And this is me, this is what I want. And this is my risk, and this is my decision. Um, that's the first step was the most difficult for me. And I have to face and overcome my fears. Then through the journey, sometimes you feel alone, loneliness. Uh, not, not physical loneliness, but spiritual loneliness. is when you, you, you think there is no more people sharing your feelings or your meaning of life or your vision of the world. Because not many people went around the world on foot but also, it's not the, the important thing, it's not the challenge, it's why I was doing that. It was to document climate change. It's because I really believe and think we, you, global action is needed. So um, sometimes, as you said, not, not many, you don't, you don't have too much support sometimes and you're putting your life at risk for your believings and mentally that's, that's hard. And you say, what's the meaning of what I'm doing? Why? why I do what I do, what makes me me and why I do what I do. So in those moments, you, you realize that you are doing what you are passionate about. When you do what you are passionate about, you have like an extra strength. Passion is the reason to wake up every morning. I really believe and it's my passion what I do to explore the planet and to, to raise awareness for the, for the conservation. And the second one is to know that what you are doing is transcend, is, is, is useful. You are, may, you are uh, like making a positive impact in the world that gives you also a lot of strength. It's not my personal dream. It's not my, something only for me. It's, you know, it's transcend and, and that those things, those motor, give you a lot of strength. Um, sometimes, uh, yeah, yeah. So that's what I believe. Um, that's what gives me a strength. That's so beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. Is there any, on either of your two big expeditions, adventures, whether it was the oceans or walking, um, is there any specific story that you would like to share with us where there was a moment or a day of real struggle and you can kind of tell us, okay, God, I thought I was gonna give up that day or I thought I, w I was, when you had the fever that I couldn't go on or, or something that you overcame or that you dealt with and maybe a learning that came out of it. Um, just in the, the, the mental blocks or the mental 
things that you were confronted with that you overcame? Is there any story like that? If not, it's okay. But is there a short story that you would like to share with us? Yeah, of course. I I have a lot of stories. I love I'm sure you do. <laughs> Yeah, of course. Uh, for me, you imagine it's a uh, thousand and ninety-five days in the open air, living in, in in nature, in contact with the elements, and sleeping under the stars in the Atacama Desert. Um, sometimes we we used to spend our time connected to a screen, and we go to nature and we make pictures as as if we were not as if we were not part. Of, of the full picture. We belong to the picture. So when you spend so much time in contact with nature, you realize that we all have our instinct. We belong to nature. Um, and th those survivals um, uh, tools you need also to, to see the northern lights in, 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 uh, in Alaska, um, open the, the door of my tent in the jungle of Ecuador and see all the jungle full of thousands of green little lights of the of the those little animals. I don't know the name. Right? They're fireflies and, and light bugs and, and yeah uh, and yeah. There's yeah. there's it's many up, different up. types. Yeah. Yeah. So that's amazing. And just sleeping under the stars, or it's raining, or you feel the wind. You listen to the birds in the early morning with the sunset. And that process goes inside yourself. You disconnect from the, we, can, we could say, the, the, the serious style of life. And you start to connect with your, uh, with your animal part, with your instinct, connected to nature. That process is, is very, very interesting. And you realize our power, the power we have physically, mentally, and spiritually. And it's, it's very interesting because when you face those situations, you discover them. If you don't go out of your comfort zone, you will never know what we are able to do. Um, yeah, so that's a very, very in important part of, for me, the most important thing, the treasure of my expeditions is people. People all over the world, people offer me the, their hands open the door of their houses and share what they have in every country. It doesn't matter the nationality, the language, the doesn't matter at all. And um, usually we watch TV, they are all bad news. But imagine travel alone on foot. Is if humanity were bad people, I couldn't reach even France. But so I can say, and it's a very important message for me, I want to 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 send back to society, humanity is good people uh, is is worth the human being is worth and we we must be conscious of that because we all together can work for a better future and for me that's yeah great that's, learning that's a beautiful message and a great learning and i really appreciate you sharing that with it. i know people need to read your book they need to follow your online uh, journeys and and ventures but it's so nice to hear it from your own voice. That leads me to really my first question, um, which I believe you've already answered, but I want to see if you have a, a different way of, of framing it for us or explaining it to us. How do you feel about being a global citizen? And what would you feel like if all in the future there were no borders, no nations, no divisions of humanity that held us back from one another. In some respects, you've already transcended that yourself, but can you give us your insights or thoughts and feelings of that, but where it would be almost a global right in the future to, to, to be part of a global citizenry or global humanity that was all connected? Yeah, for sure. I, I, I really feel a global citizen. Um, I was born in Malaga, a little beautiful city in the south of Spain. If you don't know it, I invite you to visit because it's really beautiful. Um, I, uh, my surnames, my first surname is English. Dean is from, from England. My second surname is Greek, Smolia from Greece. So in my blood, in my DNA, it's, it's the global uh, blood and I, I live in more than 20 different places 
So I, I know what, what it means not to belong to one place. I belong to planet Earth. So that's my home, that's my house, and of course I'm a global citizen. And even more after going around the world on food and those, those expeditions. Um, of course, there are, there are uh, borders, there are walls, there are limitations. I think there are geographical uh, borders. Uh, they, they will be exist forever. I mean, like an ocean. Well, of course, Pangaea will evolve and maybe in thousand years uh, and, and more, it will change, but we've got oceans, we've got mountains, we've got things that will exist forever. But we've got also physical borders. I mean, it's very, every, of, every one of us have different uh, limits. What is interesting is to know them and to work to overcome them. Um, with, there are also political borders and limitations. And what I, what I truly believe is that we must work to connect people and not to refuse what is different. I mean, it's okay, I respect the, the essence of every culture and I think that's what we should do. The indigenous people, the Aboriginal from Australia, the Eskimo from Alaska and the North Pole, but, but we, we must uh, respect, not, not refuse what is different. Um, and in that, in that, from that point of view, uh, I think we, we should abolish those kind of borders. As we belong to the planet, we should be free to travel from one place to another one. I believe there is only one race, one human race, and there is only one home, is the planet Earth. And I really feel the planet as a living being where everything is connected. The oceans, the air, the land, the forest, the animals, the biodiversity. So that's my point of view. Um, I think the 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 limits or in that way, from that point of view, uh, the political borders should be abolished, but it takes time. It's not easy. It's, uh, it it's, um, requires hard work, education, and it's not easy because there are a lot of components and circumstances, but through my journeys, the biggest border or the biggest limitation I've discovered is the mental borders. Um, I think we have the power to create reality, to build the future and to write history. That's what I really believe. It doesn't totally matter, agree. not the geographical, not the, not the physical, not the political, but the mental borders are the most important things. And we have that power. And as, the, as now we're living a crisis moment, as opportunity moment, we have the future in our hands and we have that power to build that future we want and to write those pages of history. Um, it's, it's just a question of, of mentality and of ideas. Yeah, I totally agree. I'm in alignment with you and uh, those borders are really ones that we've created and most of them are in our mind that we just need to dispel there. As um, you did your expeditions, you were truly living as a nomad and a global citizen. You went not only all the continents, but you just really, you were, you were everywhere, went to a lot of different places. Did you feel that since you'd already broken the wall or the border in your mind that there was any huge difficulties to have access or to move or to interact with different nations and borders that maybe had or have restrictions or was there any difficulties or did you realize once you committed and you were there that that it's all doable that it's we can interact with everybody mm. Well, there are borders. I, I went, I walked through four continents and 31 countries. So it's many, many borders. And some kind of borders are easy to cross. There is not much difference. Uh, I mean, for example, in the European Union. Um, then another kind of, of borders, like from Peru and Bolivia, it's easy to cross. They are much sim uh, similar from one culture to another one. But then there are big, big uh, difference. For example, when you want to cross from Indonesia to Australia, you came from one very busy, noisy and cheap and continent and suddenly you jump into the Commonwealth, Australia is very 
everything is clean, polite, strict, more expensive. So another difference is from Mexico to the United States. There is a lot of people who want to, to, eat, to go to the United States. So um, there, is, there are difference in that kind of borders. And every time I cross a border, I used to take a picture, a selfie to myself, to upload in the social nets and in internet to demonstrate I've gone through that border walking on foot. Um, so one day I had a problem. Well, I had more problems, but I came to my mind one, one day, I was crossing the border between Armenia and Iran. Um, Iran is a very different country from the uh, Western Europe. Um, the army and the religion and politics is something not to talk about. Um, some people from the army watched me taking that picture and I was almost about to, to finish my expedition on jail in jail because, uh, because of a spy. I, they, want, they thought I was a spy. So uh, it was a very difficult moment. One hour they making calls. Um, I showed them my passport with all the stamps from different countries. I showed them also news on the newspaper from different countries. Well, um, that, in that moment you realize how important is the language because I didn't speak Farsi, they didn't speak Spanish or English. So communication was difficult. Um, thanks to that, I think um, they, let, they let me go after one hour, but I was, it was difficult moments. Uh, I thought my expedition ended and uh, I was to finish in, in, in jail. Um, so you realize the borders are special places just to go through as fast as possible, just to make your the bureaucracy and, and go. Even more when you travel on foot, that you must go through the borders in the early morning. So you have time enough to reach a safe place to spend the night. Because if you cross at the last hour or the last time of the day, you will not go too far and you have to set your tent in the border. And sometimes there are not very safe places or the best place to spend the night. So, <clears throat> yeah. There was a lot of learnings that you had there. Thank you for sharing that. That, that is uh, really interesting. And I'm glad that you made it through and you had the records and the wherewithal to, to get through those and that they were intelligent enough to see of your grand mission and what you were doing. I'm, I, I want to I want to move away from more of your inner struggles, your inner learnings, and, um, and what's made you resilient and brought you to this place, and move more into now how um, your learnings on these expeditions of what you saw and documented on climate change, on the climate crisis, on what pollutions and things were occurring in different places, and um, if in all these travels, so the question is, if all these travels, all these continents, all these uh, cities, states, nations, uh, countries that you traveled across, could you say uh, that there is a big takeaway or understanding of what you saw that all humanity is dealing with in the climate crisis, the same types of pollution or the same types of destruction is there something that is unified in that or is it different in every place you go? And what, what are the learnings that you received? What did you document and say, these are some big problems that we're faced with? And, and I want to bring those to the surface so that you guys are aware. Yeah, well, I don't want to make a catastrophic list <laughs> because everywhere I've been through and when you go walk in, is the best mean of transport to document the, the real state of the environment and the places you go through. Um, so every place has different issues. It is of course the Bering Strait, it's much more different from the Gibraltar Strait or the Bismarck Sea on the Papua Island. Um, also the environment from Spain is much more different from the jungles on, in India. But I could say I could say there is a big problem, big issue uh, for all the planet is the bio biodiversity loss. 
Uh, there are scientific uh, documents from the United Nations, the, the United Nations, that in the last 50 years, we have lost more than 60% of the biodiversity of the world. It's, it's uh, terrifying. And that's something we are struggling and we must, uh, we, we should change so many things and in, in a so fast way, because we are going in the very wrong way. Then another, another thing is the global warming. Global warming because of the fossil, the fossil fuels like petroleum. So, and it, it's causing like the, 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 the high temperatures, the North Pole, the glaciers are melting. I've seen with my own eyes in the North Pole over the North Cycle Pole in Bering Strait, the Skimos are building walls to stop the waves of the ocean in winter. Bering Strait used to be frozen. You could go walking from Alaska to Russia and come back, but now things are changing. So biodiversity loss, global warming, and contamination, pollution. For me, those are the three big risk uh, threats we are going through. And pollution, I mean, not only, not only the, the atmosphere, the hydroxic carbon is the, is the name, I mean also the plastics, I mean also the chemical in the rivers, in the sea. So those are the three big problems. And of course, we are losing all the, the, the forests, the trees, um, I don't want to make it like a catastrophic yeah, list, yeah, yeah. but I think those are the three big problems. Biodiversity loss, the global warming, and the pollution. So, of course, there are, there are solutions. There, we, we could use renewable energies, solar, eolic. We can also use an economy model based on sustainable, certified ways of producing things, and, of course, a, a responsible consumerism. I think those three things are basic. How education, law, the law is very important, on of course, innovation. So we've got the problem, we've got the solution, and we've got the tools. Great. Uh, we only need the ambition. That's that's absolutely super, and I bring it brings me nicely to my most difficult question. It's the burning question. WTF and it's not the swear word it's what's the future yeah for you so you've seen the entire planet you've seen everything you've swam the oceans you've walked it um what's the future the future is what we want to make of it that's the future uh we've got the ability and we've got the tools and we've got the finance and we've got everything to change the future so if we, keep, if we keep on doing things as we are currently doing, um, not good times are coming. Uh, we will go through hard times. Um, but the future is what we want to. So I encourage all the people to do simple change in their style of life, in their, in their, in their daily lives. Because not everybody around the world is concerned and is committed with the global warming and the, the, the nature. In fact, people used to have like a, a, a consumerism and watching TV and having a car and a big house and you know that kind of style of life. But um, so I encourage people, it's about conscious, it's about consciousness. <clears throat> we are absolutely <clears throat> disconnected. We are disconnected from nature and from ourselves. We must connect again. And that's a consciousness problem. And that's an education thing. Um, we, we, we watch nature as if we watch a picture. Yeah, as, as, I, as I said before, we belong to the picture. Uh, what we make to nature, we are making to ourselves. So the planet home, uh, the planet uh, Earth, Planet water is our home. And we, what we make to the planet, we are making to ourselves. We live as if we have two and a half planets. <clears throat> Some countries, they live with even five planets. America, uh, yep. 
like with you know the overshooting day yeah uh, it's uh, maybe in july um we live as as if the natural resource were endless and that's not the way to act so i think we we um, we must be conscious and the future is what we want to build i i, I that's what i believe not as, as a society and as a single person we have the power to build the future to create that reality uh Thank you for that, and and I I specifically you you didn't specifically answer it for your for yourself. What's the future? Um, but you did in, in your past, not only in your biography and how you live and how you see the world. You're leaving the planet better than you found it. You're cleaning it up. You're living within your your planetary uh, global footprint. You're you're part of our planet. And you also said it so eloquently as we are a part of nature. We're, and I say this a lot in my podcasts, but also when I speak is we need to become homo symbiose, a part of a symbiotic earth that we're interconnected with our planet. We're interconnected with other species and nature and that our, our, our earth's biome is also very similar to our own body biome. And those two things work in harmony together and when they're not in harmony that's when we have pandemics we get sick that's when things and problems occur that really disrupt how we live in the future so i'm i'm totally in alignment with you um the the other thing is is and, and i say this a lot which also came out in what you said and i i i'm an optimist i'm very positive but mm. we're treating our earth like an open sewer, we are shitting and polluting everywhere. We are just dumping stuff into our world and our planet at will. But if you look at our world from outer space and you've looked at it on the ground, not from outer space, there is no throwaway, whether it's uh, greenhouse gas emissions, fossil fuels, whether it's plastic pollution, whether it's uh, any any kind of thing that we throw away or we emit, it doesn't go anywhere. It remains here. We need to think there is no throw away. So what we create, we need to really make sure that it's in a circular cycle, that it doesn't do us harm. It doesn't do our planet harm because eventually, if not, uh, it's going to come back to bite us in the ass. And it's also going to be very detrimental to our mm -hmm. own health and our own and our own problems because we created it. There's no one else to blame but us. Yeah. So um, the, I, I, I would really like to know if um, there are some sustainable takeaways, some ways that you feel are some tools and tips and tricks that you could depart uh, a, a, a words of wisdoms to an individual, to a business, to innovators of where they need to look, what they should do, how they start with themselves and then spread that to somewhere else. If there's anything specific, you, you mentioned the three pillars, but I think there's something that's more individual that maybe you could depart or help them with to maybe make them better or empower our listeners more with what they could do as an individual. Yeah, I always encourage people to spend more time in nature. If you love nature, spend more time in nature, just as simple as that. Nature is the master. She will teach you everything you need. Everything is in nature, everything. Um, so I encourage people to spend more time in nature. Once you do that, everything will come like a chain. Um, your, your mind will change. Um, but that's the, we, sometimes we, we watch or we think nature is an uncomfortable place. Of course, nature is not only a Walt Disney world, it's also raw, it's, it's, it's hard, it's tough. Nature has both sides. Um, but I, I, that's what I think is full of teachings and learnings. So uh, spend more time in nature, watch the trees, watch the birds, watch the animals. We are not so far from them. The, our behavior is not so different. They also ha have relationships. They also have a language. They also have sexual needs. 
they also eat, they go hunting, they need to rest, they have illness. We are not so, so, so different from them. Then, of course, in our daily lives, we can make changes. Of course, try to go walking, try to go by bicycle, uh, or use a, a, a public mean of transport, something that is not, not so polluting to the atmosphere or to the air. What happens that if you want to go walking, it means you must be, uh, you must own your time because when you go walking, you need more time. But when you go walking, it's not only important, the, the, the destination, but it's all the way. And that's life about. We are, life is about walk all the way and all the things you, you live and you learn and the people you meet. And when you go walking, uh, there is no need to walk around the world, but when you go walk into any place, what you discover is the insects, the, the sun, the stars, the wind, what you enable you eat, you enjoy all the way. And walking is the best way to, uh, because you, you, you throw oxygen to your mind. You see your ideas are, are more clear. All the things connect deep inside your brain. You see things much more uh, in, in, in a better way and in a more clear way than just being sitting on a car or in a chair every day. Um, of course, try to reduce uh, what you consume. I mean like a responsible consumerism and what you, what you buy, uh, try to do as, as natural as possible, free of plastics, carry your bags from home. Um, Try to buy things certified by sustainable uh, uh, stamps, or I mean, like for example, fishery, sustainable fish coming from a sustainable fishery. I, I encourage people to to go vegetarian or to go vegan, of course, because there is a great problem with the forest, with the every well. Uh, there is a documentary. There's the cow conspiracy. Yes. I know. Yeah. I think everybody know it, but I encourage people to buy things coming, for example. When I remember when I meet you in the COP25, I, I talked to you about my shoes. They are made from plastics and fishery nets taken from the ocean, that kind of things. The, the fashion, fashion uh, company is the second most polluting of the world. Um, so there is a real problem with, with fashion, with clothes. Uh, there are many, many things. And nowadays there are studies that demonstrate that the most uh, sustainable companies are more efficient and will survive in the long term. Uh, nowadays, we are changing our, changing our mind and a company that doesn't make a positive impact in society will go through hard times because they have to demonstrate why they are in the market. Yep. If you don't make a positive impact, if you are, if you are not purpose driven, people will ask you why you are in the market. So now it's time also for changing for that mentality for the companies and of course also for the governments. Now we're uh, with the social development goals from the United Nations. Um, it seems they are in the second, second scene because the coronavirus, coronavirus pandemic is in all the media, in all the screens, in all the papers, but we don't, we, we don't must forget that uh, after the coronavirus pandemic is the economical crisis, but even bigger is the climate change wave. And we must change from the short term to the long term. We must change that mentality. We have to make to have a broad uh, mind. We don't live in, in just one, one meter of the earth. We live in the full earth and what we do here is connected what, what is happening thousand kilometers and what you eat, where does it come from? It comes from more than 1000 kilometers and what's your clothes made of and who make them? We must be conscious of that. So I encourage people to, to, have a, to change from short term to long term, to have a sustainable mentality and to work all together. I think one of the lessons of the times we are going through is the cooperation and collaboration. It's the end we talked about before the, the, the 
homosymbiosis, symbiosis. Symbiotic, yep. Symbiotic, yeah. So I think that's the moment for that. Stop I, competence, stop the Darwin theory. It's okay, yeah. there are mutations, there are things happening in the evolution, but the real evolution is through collaboration and yeah. cooperation. This neo-Darwinism, neoliberalism, uh, survival of the fittest, um, only the strong survive, natural selection, that's all bullshit, it doesn't exist, it's not real. Those things are uh, ones that are made up and, and they don't come from Darwin. Darwin's original theory is that we're all uh, cooperate, that we're all evolving together as species and, and uh, that twist on, on, on the way that only the strong survive, that only through competition, that it's natural selection. Um, that is really a thing that's come back to bite us in the ass. It's hurt us. It hasn't made us more efficient as businesses. It's made us um, cheapen um, products, which cheapens life. If you cheapen food, you cheapen life. If you cheapen the way you produce a product or, or, or that and it pollutes rivers and it harms human health and it harms our environment, then you're actually cheapening life for short-term profitable capitalistic gains. And that is a very short-term goal or short-term thing that will always come back to hurt humanity and our world in the long run. So I'm full alignment with you as an advocate for the sustainable development goals, I strongly believe that this is a, a great plan to get us nicely to December 2030. Um, I also know that right now throughout the world, whether it's the pa pandemic or Black Lives Matters or any Brexit or political things going on in the world, that right now our civilization frameworks that we're uh, operating in that we're experiencing wherever we live in this world are not really working for everyone. There's the Trumpocalypses, the Bolsonaros, the Putins, the Shays, the Duartes, the Erdogans. There's all, there's the Brexits. There's all these different agendas and things going on, on the, in the world. There, none of them are unified and none of them are a global plan for us all. And, and just one example, one decision that Bolsonaro makes in Brazil to let the rainforest burn affect us all, all over the world, whether it's Spain or Germany or the US. And so that leads me to my question, what does a world that works for everyone look like for you, Nacho? Yeah, um, as, I, as I walk uh, around the world, uh, Imagine the, the, the mind is like an onion and you peel all the uh, layers, all, all, the, all the layers. So you, you go, you take off all the layers. And finally, you reach the essence. What I found there, what I found there is love. Love is the answer to every problem and it doesn't change, doesn't matter the country, doesn't matter the, the age we are living, doesn't matter the nationality. Love is the answer, but I love as a way of being in the world, as a way of love over the differences, to treat others, to treat nature, to treat ourselves, if, if you don't love yourself, it's not possible to love the world around you. So, but it, it's like, it's like you have to make a step to reach that point of consciousness. Um, so for me, that's the answer. It works all over the world and in every country, doesn't matter the border, doesn't matter the differences. And for me, that's the, that's the answer. Love, love is the answer. Beautiful. You've given yeah. us some fabulous answers during our conversations today and uh, not only connect to, to nature and, um, and love, but it's also this golden rule, treat people and planet how you would like to be treated, to, to love yourself and, and to leave the planet better than we found it, to clean it up. 
that connection to to nature that you've advocated that we get out and we connect ourselves with uh, our nature wherever we are, whether we live in a city or not, to just get out and take a walk. What happens uh, for a lot of people is not only do you feel that re reconnection when you do that, but you also start to notice um, not just the good things, but you start to notice the ugly things. And eventually when you walk by so much plastic or cigarette butts or so much graffiti or so much destruction, um, you, you love it so much that you decide to clean it up or make it better because you say, you know, this is my neighborhood or this is my forest or this is my place where I'm walking. And actually, I don't just want it to be nice and clean inside my home. I'd like it to be nice and clean outside. And you start to care and you start to, to nurture that area and clean it up and capture not only emissions, but plastic and pollution and, and make sure that it's a beautiful uh, a place to live in. And so naturally, those are things that over time happen. Um, and, and it's a change that happens with each of us. I really thank you for your time, for sharing the wisdom Nacho, you are an inspiration to me, a hero for our planet. And I hope that our paths cross and we connect many, many more times and we can collaborate on, on many things. I encourage all my listeners to push and promote and help you to, to, to help us to make our planet better and to, to get your mission out there to the world. And I'll do the best I can to hook you up with any agency and connection I can to to, to push your, your mission further. Thank you so much for your time. And if there's, if there's anything else you'd like to tell us before I say goodbye, this is your chance to depart that message. Thank you, Mark. It's a really it's a true privilege for me. I would like to finish with one tale. Maybe you heard about it before. It's the Two Caves tale, you know? I haven't heard about it, I okay. don't think. No. There is, it's, it's a world where there are two caves. In one cave, it's people living, it's conscious people living, clean people who is worried and concerned about others, about nature, the environment they live in. The other cave, it's people dirty. They don't care about others. When they have to go to the toilet, they even don't go out of the cave. So when everything is a mess, they decide to move to another cave. Now, the moment, the current moment we are living, there are no more caves to move. So we have to change our mind and care the cave, the place, the environment where we live. So we must change the mind, the mentality. There is no more me and you. Now it's time for us. There is no one country, another country. It's time to talk about planet Earth our home. So that's the change to be conscious that I encourage everybody to do and to go forward. That's my final message. And I, I really appreciate this time, this conversation with you. I think we, we have to make another conversation because I have a lot of questions for you. Um, I appreciate and hope there is a, a, a new meeting coming soon. Of course, and uh, as you get your books in English, then I'll, I would love to read them and um, then we can talk about them as well and go into another conversation. I would love to have you on the show again. I, I stalk and follow you online regardless and I know we're connected and I, I want to make sure that you continue your wonderful mission. Thank you so much, Nacho. You have a wonderful day and thanks for your time. Thanks. Thank you, Mark. See you.